Hello, everyone. My name is Neptune, and tonight at the CCA, a week five, season three, we do have two heading matches tonight here. We have, but up first, we have MSU FRIB versus Coastal Squid Surge here. I'm joined by Raphael, and tonight I'm, I'm interested to see what these two teams bring to the table. What about you, Raphael? Me too. I'm interested to see tonight. Um, we're in Div 5, and both of these teams, I believe, are contenders for playoffs. A lot of teams are in that boat right now with um, playing out their reschedules. It's going to be a really tense reschedule week. A lot of nail-biting matches to see who advances to the next stage of the league. Yeah. Definitely, like, if you look at some of these stats here for MSU, FRB, right? Uh, FRIB, my bad. Uh, you notice how week three and week four, they got some very convincing wins over uh, the other team. The only team that really was able to contest them was OU Black, which uh, if we transition over to the Coastal Squid Surge stats, uh, you can see that uh, they beat OU Black here as well as IVC Devil Rays. So, but hey, you know what? Stats are just only one part of the equation here, Raphael. It all comes down to how you play with your team and if it's enough to, <laughs> to win the game. Definitely, definitely. I know I've even gotten complacent resting on my laurels before, you know, complacent, ah, oh, who beats who? Well, you know, we beat these guys and they beat these guys, so we don't have to worry this week. But you really can't just, you can't, it, you, it's not that easy. You can't look at that. You can't underestimate your opponent like that. So it's not over till it's over. Yep. And I'm looking, I'm interested to see what Coastal Squid Surge pulls out on MSU Frib this week. Um, we see here if it looks like Coastal Squid Surge, they've seen their fair share of tournament results, which I can't say we have a lot of data on from MSU Frib yet. So, yeah. Coastal Squid Surge, they have a little bit more establishment on their hand here, a little more experience under their belt, maybe. Yeah, I can definitely see that here, but like missing data, it can work both ways, right? You can be on one yeah. hand, you can be definitely like a secret like a meta team just under the covers here, hiding under, lurking under the Div Vision 5 here at the CCA. Or you can actually be in Div 5 and, you know, be like like what we expect, right? But hey, it yeah, go ahead and show the map list here. Uh, we have Splat Zones Umami Ruins to start us off here, and then we're going to be leading off the Tower Control Hagglefish Market. We have some other er, things lined up here. Is there anything that stands out to you on this map list, Raphael? Um, Zones Umami definitely stands out to me, just because it's new. People are still kind of learning their way around it. But I really like the way it divides the zones in two like that. I kind of feel like it leads to more dynamic play throughout the match. You know, it's not just, oh, you hold this one zone, you play around this one stagnant spot on the map. The fact that it's split up and there are like two stages to the fight to take back mid i think that's a really cool aspect of that stage um i also think it's really well suited to bring out some, some cool bucket comps i see a lot of people try and pull their try new bows out on that i've seen people pull bucket um deco before bucket so, deco really on this map i have seen it yeah it's I'm, i under i underestimate the weapon a little i'm not that much of a believer in it but I've seen people pull out, I've seen people frag with it, so I don't know, maybe maybe I'm getting challenged on that. Yep, you all know what stands out to me, the Rainmaker game on Mahi Mahi, man. I think this is going to be an absolute bloodbath because that's the nature of Mahi Mahi. Uh, not much space to breathe, right? And sometimes the backline can just get shut down really easily, either from like a, a special or a bomb placement, just scratching them on the toes and just being able to just basically cut out their life and they're just gonna be stuck in respawn uh haven i think that's what's gonna be happening with that map but uh hey it all just comes down to how these teams play their cards here but uh yeah mahi mahi is one of those things that just kind of sticks out like a sore thumb here but other than that i think this is pretty solid is there yeah. anything CCA with their, you know, we, we have some fun maps. We were playing like what Wahoo Zones last week. Wahoo uh, Zone. <laughs> Wahoo Zone. Yeah, yeah they, I'm not saying Wahoo when I'm taking that zone. That's all I'm going to be saying. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, but definitely here. Uh, something else I think that stands out here, I think, is Tower Control Mako Mark. I think that's an excellent map mode combination. Mako Mark being a Splatoon 2. Mako, Mako Mart, Mako Mart, however you want to say it, I think those are just 
it's one of the best maps of the game because you know already well established lots of ways to approach the enemies right something for every type of play style that you want going on but uh looks like we're gonna be getting into our games here and if the team's ready up oh boy <laughs> the excitement is killing me right now <laughs> Yeah, it looks like we're about to hop into this match. This team's gearing up, getting ready. I I've never seen actually, but um, I've never tuned into these two teams yet, so this will be my first time watching them in action. But... It's not same here, man. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what each of these teams bring to the table here. But uh, yeah, let's see what they bring out here. I I see some uh, some meta picks from some of these teams, but like we'll we'll see, we'll see. All right. And the Explosher, okay, you called some buckets coming out, okay, and sloshing machines, okay. I expected the sloshing machines, but I did not call expect the Explosher here. What do you think about these comps, Raphael? I think definitely don't underestimate the Explosher. We try to run Explo a lot on our team, and it's a really powerful weapon for zones, especially on long, thin zones like this. It can just paint half the zone with one shot. Now we see that MSU Bridge are getting the first significant fix, and they're already pushing up in the mid. They're getting themselves set up on that NFT. Um, not maybe applying as much pressure to Squid Surge's drops as they could. Yeah, I can I agree with that. Yeah, it's just uh, generally it's felt like this gave them space unnecessarily. Either they just didn't want to like take a list or something like that. But I felt like they should have at least contested the zone there at the start. But hey, you know what? We have these black dudes who try to pop crap, but no, it gets shut down by splash with all of them. And Azuka <laughs> comes out to retaliate that girl. Yeah, that's a really, really nice um, take on the side of the NSU here. We say, we, they backed up, but like they didn't go down. They rolled back out, and right here we see that they're going down again. Uh, <laughs> never mind, right as I was saying it, Squid Surge rolling back in. They're bringing out the specials. They have those chunks, and they are diving in on the NSU to see for... Honestly, exactly, never mind. Looks yeah. like MSP just took it right back. I want to comment on those chumps over there, by the way, because like while chumps like obviously won't do like damage like a traditional special, right? It obviously just allows you to get in and right, and it also quite, provides quite a bit of paint like on the landing, still quite a bit. So uh, definitely something there that can help push in when you're going into the zone. But uh, it seems like Squid Surge is like back into a bit of a corner here and just wondering how to answer any of these uh, questions that uh, MSU is asking. <laughs> They're aiming their chunks in the three, uh, trying to get in with you out of the zone, but they don't have the firepower and how to back it up directly. Yeah, it's yeah, the clock is ticking down, and they just have such good paint, especially with that expo and the squeezer being able to put out pressure to just prevent um, like more reckless approaches from happening in there. So it's just a matter of time where MSU just being able to pick out those last few seconds. And yeah, that's the game one going to MSQ. Really nice controlled pace um, throughout that game. You know, they Squid Surge managed to get hold of the zone a few times, but nothing significant enough to really threaten MSU. Um, we saw they were just taking that timer away. Really good play out of them. Yeah, definitely. I'm, <laughs> I was like quite a strong showing from MSU side there. And I got to admit that some of those picks, like I did not expect to work nearly as well on this map. Perhaps I'm just a bad lack of unfamiliarity. And you definitely told, showed or convinced me that Expo is pretty good on this map, being able to just like paint that zone, just control so much space with just its entire kit. Right, right. We unfortunately probably aren't going to see the um, Expo return this next round, if I had to guess. But, oh, wait, we have the replay right here. Let's see what's going on here. Um, yeah, it looks like that yeah. was Squid Surge. Probably their last chance to recap the zone. Unfortunately, they had that 52 machine pair going in trying to threaten that left zone, but they just yeah. couldn't quite find it. The it seemed like they were just playing scared, right? I like understand like yeah. you have to like play safe, right? And I just kind of felt like they just gave up space unnecessarily. Right? Like, obviously, all that team did have tools to be able to just fight back, right? Against, like, some of the things. Like, obviously, Squeezer is, like, one thing that could be very terrifying, right? But the problem with Squeezer, it's not very ink efficient, right? It has to stop somehow and reload, right? So during those down times, right, you can definitely punish it either with like, some of your subs or specials, right? And the sloshing machine would be able to get some pretty good angles on that platform right there. I feel like, um, 
there's just a lack of coordination especially but definitely something that can be adjusted with the games uh as the set goes on definitely um honestly i feel like a lack of um willingness cut to like commit to the push was kind of something we saw out of both teams but i will say it paid off that cautious play on the side of msu frib kind of paid off whenever squid search had taken that zone yeah we saw them space so that squid search could spin their specials and then they push right back in but we're going into game two here we see a range coming out of msu that's range cool. and e leader okay two very yeah. like far range weapons to pressure the tower here but uh you know what we'll see how um squid search is able to counteract this here um not really sure um feeling both these comps here i don't know i feel like a lot of these comps like i would say squid surge is more balanced but frib is like made to destroy the tower you riders <laughs> yeah yeah so we see here it's kind of just a stalemate in mid they're trying to get their stuff set up and they're really nice between uh, the chunk and whale coming from squid surge here it looks like they're trying to pressure and rescue back they aren't covering that many angles, but they're kind of just going for some hits. So, MSU Frib is able to hold it off until they can answer back with their strikes and their crab. Yeah, I thought. Power. Yeah, if you notice there, I kind of felt, noticed a Squid Surge. They were like trying to go in or like trying to find an opportunity, but then they kind of like just gave up halfway through. Like, I felt like the gal could have gotten like a few picks if they kept going up with the splash ball. Because the thing about the 52 gal, right, it's one of those weapons that's like able to slowly just keep going up and up and up, right, as long as it's not being contested, right? It can just keep reloading behind the splash ball and throwing it on. But no, this Rage Blaster is going to show some dominance here and pressure so many of these Squid Surge members here. The, 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 the way Breaker's coming. Out. I think I heard a crab go off your tower. Like, oh my goodness. Like, the specials are being tossed around. But, like, ingredients in a kitchen. There's not much that is being responded to on the side of Squid Surge. Oh, definitely. Oh, that was a really nice shoot coming up. <laughs> we saw that rain flash on a hot shoot there. And I think that was two crabs we saw come out of the splash within that one push. So that, was, that was something else right there. A really great opening way to you know, set the tone for the rest of the game from here. Yeah. Um, I think definitely, yeah, the Rage Blaster needs to get those picks to enable a lot of that aggression, and like, it got those picks as we saw there, and able to score 37 there, but definitely I think this is one of those things that's like, it can be a little hard to just like, keep the pressure up, because you have like, two weapons that just don't like fighting aggro, if you know what I mean. Right. Right. Um, uh, right. What I think I want to see out of Squid Surge here, we're halfway into the game, and they're going to need to get all the way past practically the um, second catch, which is really challenging on the um, map like Haggle Fish, unless you can get in the lane snowball. Yeah. And then often with these slow approaches, they aren't yeah. taking the pass to them, and that's giving the MSU time to build up their own special. Yeah, it's just going to be harder. We yeah, it's early. They're back at the second checkpoint for round two. And with those crabs, with their E leader, yeah, Hagglefish is the uh, map, what I call the battle for mid, right? <laughs> it's all about controlling mid and being able to maintain mid, but right now, MSU is able to comfortably maintain mid. Uh, but so far, I, I, there seem to be backing off here because of the pressure from the Fizzy Ball in the Slashing Machine, interestingly enough. Yeah, um, see, nice angles there, but I'm getting that, that pressure on the flank here. And a huge triple on MSU. Blizzard might find their findings to find their um, first significant push of the game here. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like they're getting past that first check. They know if they play their point right they can get well into the second. Ooh, that E leader's gonna get a pick before he goes down. Oh my goodness. But the slot machine's gonna try him here. It's the slot machine's all alone here. Going to try to see if they can play for mid. But no, just gonna seem to give up space. But the fizzy bomb, I like the fizzy bomb throws. You kind of notice like how he's throwing them away. Just like has a back off move because that was really bombs the hits. They can combo and cause quite a bit of damage. Definitely, definitely. That now that seems to be in a stalemate here, and Squid Surge needs to find an answer soon and push that, that tower up into past mid. Otherwise, it's gonna seems like it's gonna swing over to uh, MSU for another win. Yeah, it's looking like that's what we're gonna see. Um, 
Blitzer trying to keep our power, but the Gulia picks off the Nod. That Gulia bomb is probably not finding much value as they would have liked. They do manage to get the game on the leader though. The Blitzer plays patiently, they play for respawns, but MSU closes in on them and wipes them back out of mid again. 30 seconds. Yeah, that was, that was rough. There is, our is really tight. Uh, that was really rough there. I just think, uh, how do I say it? It's just one of those things that just like, they got very antsy, right? Obviously there's still time in the game and they could have played it a little bit safer here. It's surprisingly, since I think this team's like very knowing like how to play safe and like know when to back off, right? They made something that was a bit easier to take their scene. Seconds left on the clock. Three down on the side of Squid Church. Yeah, that, that is game yeah. two going right all... back. You. Yeah, you saw you saw the Squid Surge sloshing machine trying their best to knock anyone off tower, but like sloshing machine, it does have a little bit of a slower time to kill. So like, yeah, you can land a direct maybe, but when you're laying that second hit, uh, swinging, getting ready to swing for the second one, uh, they're probably just gonna touch tower. And at the end of the day, that was exactly what seemed to happen there. Even though Squid Surge tried to delay the uh, what was it, the tower recapture there. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, Squid Surge just couldn't. They just couldn't move fast enough to get the momentum they needed. Like I was saying, they were, you know, the, on their opening push, they were all just trying to fight their way through mid. But in that time that they were fighting tooth and nail, um, we saw MSU build up specials, push right through with trips, crab. Yeah, definitely. I kind of noticed like a lot of um, just uh, specials that are just being used like not together as well right versus msu which i felt like were coordinating specials like i kind of noticed like the crab coming up at right after the wave breaker right like i know like people like to say like wave breaker isn't that great but like generally if you can like get people out of hiding right for the crab to be able to get those picks i think it's really crucial yeah definitely uh, oh. <laughs> okay. It looks like we're getting some technical difficulties here, folks. So yeah. please bear air with us here. But uh, you know what? Just because the technical difficulties doesn't mean these teams are going to slow down here tonight. But hey, seems like they're going to be going over to game number three, which was, I think, Mahi Mahi Resort Rainmaker, if you can correct Rainmaker, me from that. Yeah. yeah. That's All right. the replay. Yeah, this was when that rain flashed that they were on that street, getting that pressure just on that flat not letting Squid Surge push up and get the angle to threaten tower there. Really nice game sense on the part of Peachy. Yeah, it was, It was. I think something that's just like range blaster, it's like one of those things, it's like once it has control, it is really hard to like get out, right? Like the most you can really do, I feel like sometimes is just annoy it with bombs, but even if it takes, if it has, if it has the paint to move around it, it doesn't mind like just squid rolling out of the way of those bombs and just taking it and keep on the holding the position that they're already in which just creates so much pressure and opportunities for uh msu to be able to just hold tower and get it as far as it did yeah i mean with a really strong opening push like that msu set themselves up to really just say all they had to do was play defensively for the rest of the game um obviously you know they i'm trying to push past that but that was really their i think that was probably the strongest push they made at the opening right there yeah. Um, let's For start the a up we're going to see these teams pull out on Mahi Rainmaker. Mahi Rainmaker. Okay, so considering how slow MSU was able to play that, right? I do think they were they are very capable of going forward and back, forward and back, right? As you saw, right? In the last two games, right? They knew when to back off and they knew when to like take space, right? Well, Coastal Squid Surge, right, has been playing really passively with what I feel is like more aggressive weapons, right? I do think uh the knot might be coming back out because not it's like object damage is like one of those things that's just able to shred the rainmaker shield just really easily and just it, i think it has a good time just ducking in and cat over in and out of cover on this map especially when there's already so little cover oh definitely um, okay. squids are just too low. uh wait do we have our team mixed up here have we been? Okay. Okay. Here, let me let me double check some facts here, folks. I'm sorry. <laughs> if I've been 
<laughs> if I, I've been calling it wrong this entire time, uh, my apologies here, folks. Uh, seems like there was just some technical hiccups. For you know, it's late in the night. April Fools happened. I got, I got, yeah. I got trolled a little bit here. Okay, I'm sure everyone got their good sense of. Uh, pranks and, and some there's some victims here out like me but uh, it seems like coastal squid search was the one actually being in 2-0 position here not msc frib my bad that's my bad too i never caught it um i i think they might even have their team tag in their name so i don't know how we didn't catch that but going into game three here um we see both teams rolling out the mid trying trying to get that pop and it looks like msc getting that pop um yeah, I just think the Range Blaster stays, which it, I think is a very interesting decision because Range Blaster it doesn't have nearly as much breathing room, like as you saw right there. I tried to try and stay in mid to hold space, but it just didn't have the opportunity to breathe as much as it wants to breathe. Right, and we see here, you know, the, a lot of purple, um, in the season, a lot of purple out on the map here. Getting that Booyah Bomb really pushing in from um, Coastal Squid Surge's Q-Leader back. In a triple two, it looks like MSU is bringing that Rainmaker up to first checkpoint. Yep, not only to admit anything here in the match, and the Rainmaker's already dunked on MSU's side here. They're looking to play a little bit faster here with their, um, how do I say it, their composition. Uh, seems like they're definitely trying to get as many points as possible here before the... Uh, <laughs> the they wipe here, the but... Hey. Yeah, yeah. Um, going for the distance all the way to 24. Unfortunately, on Mavi, this is such a small map. So snowball heavy, too. Um, Squid Church, you could easily overcome that with one, with one single push. Nice snipe on the side of. This is this is Coastal Squid Church. In the, in the this is Coastal Squid yes, yes, yes. Again, technical difficulties, folks. So, <laughs> again, apologies for that. But hey, uh, we are. We're just gonna continue on and just call it as we see it here. We see uh, Squid Search is uh, constantly putting pressure here on the platform of MSU Frib, but uh, currently it just seems like they're just ready to sit back and play very patiently. Oh, it seems. Yeah, it seems they don't want to get themselves down prematurely. They want to have all the power they can behind their foot, but unfortunately they can't find the opener they need right now. Yeah, definitely a lot of these weapons like, right here are really good at fighting. Like not like for example, 52 is really good at fighting, Squash is really good at fighting, especially when it's backed up by someone and as good as a painter like the end zap. The Nautilus is just generally one of those things that's able to shut down all the shorter range shooters like the Splash and the T-Tech. It's able to easily bully a lot of these things, but just uh this the sniper on Coastal Squid Surge is trying their best here to get as many picks as possible as look at this positioning right here, just being able to just get laughed. Across that whole platform here, but no, the lead's gonna fall, and Coastal Squid Surge is gonna be able to take it here. Saw that crab trying to body block for the range, and that was something else to see. Um, yeah, body yeah. blocking with crab is something I you don't see too often because normally it's just like position in places to just either make people back off, right, and play defense. Or it's able to be pushed up so far that's able to actually destroy things. <laughs> but hey, you know what? The defensive play from, uh, from uh, Coastal Squid Surge with Crab there. You gotta, gotta respect the creativity some of these teams have here, especially in various divisions here. Right, right. Um, now we see that as you're trying to push their way back into the mid, they're playing patiently though, they don't want that Rainmaker to down without their team backing up. Kind of just a massive firefight. Nobody quite dropped in yet until now. Was that a double from the splash? That was pretty nice. It looks like they're going for more. They are hungry. They got a taste of that ink and they just want more of it, it seems. Definitely, definitely. Total bloodbath right there. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Splash is one of those things that, like, playing for crab is, like, typically what you see, but, like, seeing, like, some, a more aggro and aggressive splash, because it's, it's a lightweight weapon, it has the burst bombs, it has the mobility, right? And it's able to be aggressive when it needs to be, and I love seeing how, uh, people play the weapons a little bit more, uh, differently at these varying levels here, because it's kind of like, uh, they haven't quite figured out exactly, like, the super optimal ways to play it, or just, like, play the, oh, we're, I'm just gonna pay for crab all the time, right, and play super safe, right? But no, I love to see the more risks to that being taken from both sides here to be able to just see if they can put momentum in their favor. 
Um, now we see that rank is getting a nice double push on. Oh, wow. wipeout is going to happen here. This out in SU. This could be game. It looks like they're playing patiently. They want to make sure that Rainmaker has a Definitely clear. Yeah, um, they can't, they can't go up. They, they can't go up. Yeah, they just have such good like momentum on their side. And just being, oh, this Rainmaker being risky here. I, if I were okay, you know what? They didn't necessarily have to dunk that. That that was all style points because they had the Rainmaker. They were holding in such a spot where literally MSU did not have the range or ants or specials to be able to just try and pick it off and send it into overtime. I personally would just like to see. Uh, Coastal Squidsters just hold on to the Rainmaker and wait out the clock, but no, they want these knockouts here. They want these commanding leads, as <laughs> that was demonstrated by that dunk at the end there. Definitely. I think, I believe it was um, Chai on the splash for a Coastal Squid Surge. Shout out to them, the way they just dove on um, MSU in that corner at the end, following up that Rainmaker fire, almost using it as cover to get to sneak himself in there. Yeah, was it, it, clever play. That, that was really risky too because I felt like it was like three players alive and like near the uh near the last checkpoint for the for the rainmaker there, but uh you know what? Oh, okay, yeah, see we're getting in the replay over here with this uh what was it? Yep. Yep, we're getting the replay here showing the push here, but attempts, but it's just gonna be shut out out here with the splash here. And it's just trying to f feed more, right? Like get, get more get more of those kills and just create more pressure. Because even if it goes down, right, the damage was done and the teammates can have an easy time to either just follow up from the splashes plays or just be able to just take more space and just pr create the momentum they needed. But yeah, love seeing this replay here with the dunk here. They just found that opportunity and took it and just put it in at the end there. Right, just taking their, seizing their moment, establishing their dominance in the match. Um, we haven't seen, haven't seen MSU take a single game yet in this set, in this set, and this is match point for Squid Surge, I believe, correct? Yeah, score yeah, three to zero. Yeah, yeah score three to zero here, right? Um, I'm curious to see how MSU, if they, they do have a response to this, right? Because currently, it seems like every game they've gotten like any sign of footing all right they just kind of like slipped or like played a little bit too safe i feel like they're doing or it's it's like one of those learning curves of just like trying to find out like oh okay is this now safe to push up oh is it now safe to just play defense right should we just be in mid should we be back in our spawn painting for specials right it just seems to be like one of those things they just don't have the clearest mindset of like what they're doing this is causing like discoordination between their teammates here but definitely one of those things that's just uh how do I say? It's a learning curve, right? Splatoon is a lot going on at the same time and a lot of information to process, especially with three other people on the mic. Right, right. It's hard to just process it all at once. You need to take those baby steps, you know, get yourself acclimated. And once you once you start getting the hang of things, that's where we start seeing more coordinated team play. Um, I, think, I think MSU, they were finding their footing in that game we just saw. That was the closest they had come to taking the game off of Squid Surge, um, heading the counter all the way down to 24. So can they adapt going forward in the rest of the set? Have CSU in the blue and MSU in the orange. And we see MSU rocking the same comp, um, swapping their 52 out for a 96, actually. Really? A 96? Okay, you know what? I'm not sure uh, how good the 96 is going to be in Clan Blitz here, considering the Kraken Cheese is uh, not nearly as effective after the patch. You can't carry Clan Blitz, but perhaps you can get like a super jump in at least for like a power climb. But ooh! Snipe here coming over from Pisa, showing the, the time and effort they have put in with this healer and jump shots like that. I don't know how Charger players have that kind of coordination. So kudos, uh, kudos to Pisa. Um, we see they're trying to take advantage of that pick, trying to take advantage of those picks, keeping those tri strikes, using those tri strikes to keep MSU pinned over in their street. Yeah, the clan economy. Like that was the clam academy here, Raphael. Like 20 clams on the side of Squid Surge here, already and hungry to be able to just get into that spawn here as MSU just really gives them more space here. I haven't seen like too many um, like 1v1s here like that are like up close and personal, but like 
I've seen like picks definitely, especially from those charges. He's just doing a great job being able to just grab the other uh, power clam just before it disappears, just maintain the clam economy. But no, it seems like MSU is gonna be the one that <laughs> to be able to take control of mid as well as use his cracking here to cut it to chaos. You see that cracking trying to clear out bunker. Unfortunately, they do, they do find the case they need. They do get the middle off it, but he's a shutting that right down. That's yeah. a wipe. And definitely. Team. Yep. Just trying to paint up and give their teammates an opportunity to just come in with these power clams here. That was really good game sense on the e there, they're noticing how the wipeout happened and just like, oh hey, no one has an entry point into the glass. Let me move up here so my teammates can super jump up. Again. Yeah, unfortunately they don't quite find the moment that they wanted out of that push. Failed to get MSU in a lockout here and their range blaster probably takes the fight they should have. Um, for yeah, Thomas, they're specials to get back in the mid, but we don't see a lot of momentum coming in yet. Yeah, it's just, and the clan economy is also just very low right now. It's like, I think they're just like trying to slowly build that up here before they get anything like substantial here. Because like when you want to go in, right, you want to be able to have clams to be able to push that basket. Otherwise, uh, they're going to have enough time to respawn and perhaps punish you to get you out of the, that spawn. Right, right. Now it looks like the team is trying to do that kind of here. Fire and they're chumps at it. Um, they failed to find the pick on the Twitter crab that they were probably looking for. But it looks like they are getting the position advantage here. No one's like how much swim speed this big 96 has. Oh my goodness. It's making me yeah. a little bit dizzy. It's just like to see a weapon that's like, you know, normally like played uh, more uh, passively, I'd say, and then paints for cracking being able to make those aggressive plays, right? They are not slowed down, showing they could take fights like the range blaster after they exited out of that crack in there. But hey, you know what? That could have just been a range blaster moment. I've seen a lot of range blaster moments in my time playing this game, but that was certainly one of them. <laughs> Definitely. Um, we see their machine is kind of going alone here. Rest of MSU is taking a minute to back up, and yeah, that machine going down. Good surge is not letting MSU take mid here yet. Um, yeah, there's the slam economy, but yeah, it just seems to be a stalemate right now. M Manta Maria is like even it's like one of those maps that just like it kind of it's, it's like Eel Tail but designed actually pretty well. The thing is, like, Eel Tail's such a long map, it's gonna take a long time to be able to just get anywhere to the basket right now. Um, about a minute's ripple here on the clock here, but MSU needs to make something happen here soon, otherwise it's gonna be lights out for them. Right, right. They only have, you know, like you said, they only have so much time left on the clock. Without much map control, they don't have access to a lot of clams right now either. And yeah. You see, 42 clams! <laughs> Uh, oh my goodness, you, you, you did, when you see the clam counters get up that high, you know they are getting antsy for a push here, but no. Kraken's just gonna be able to see if they can get some super jumps in here. Right, Let's see if they can. Pretty. No, but the one of them Oh my god. Oh, oh, you hate to see that, folks, but you gotta admit, that is one of those things that just was a desperation play because nothing seemed to be happening that stalemate there and it seems like more is not going to be happening anytime soon but uh you know what overtime is definitely going to be happening here and we're going to see if msu is going to see if they can attempt the same thing again or do a more traditional push where they uh wipe out some of the enemy team on squid surge's side but no <laughs> they managed to get the clan basket open and say <laughs> coastal squid surge looks in a very comfortable position right here because they're keeping that basket wide open to prevent overtime from happening unfortunately for msu oh, they couldn't they got the pity just in the nick of time they got that power from them to go into overtime but they weren't able to stop squid surge sneaking in with that last clam too yeah in, in the match um yeah one thing i want to like point out here is like the desperation plays right while they do kind of work at like some levels right and like at stalemates where like a team just needs to have something in there right if both power clams landed even still right two members would have still dropped anyways and it would have just been a 4v2 right on um squid so squid surge side right so they're just able to like overwhelm and easily just come back really fast because they get another power clamp at the end of the day right who's to stop them from like able to push in and just take that power clamp all the way in when their other teammates are just busy respawning right 
Uh, we're getting a replay here and just noticing the Kraken just trying to go in here because like this is the thing with um with Kraken here like someone was wondering oh why wasn't super jumping uh, patched out right to the Kraken and this is it folks it's just it costs so many resources right from you have to you have to trade in your life for power clams right and if those power clams don't win you the game then you're just giving a wide opportunity for squid or teams like squid surge that have the player number advantage just push in and just score as many clams to them as, as they desire here you saw like what was it nearly 40 set three points they scored just even including the penalty they had before that was able to what wipe them out way past the 60 mark if they did land to uh the clams there from the super jump on msu side Right. And what I think I see a lot of low-level teams do, and what I think I saw MSU doing tonight, is failing to understand the real value of Kraken. They're trying to cheese that push in that desperation attempt, trying to dunk those clams into the basket. But what they really could have used that Kraken to do is to get use that cut on the right side of the map to get behind the enemy lines and really force them to get that pressure away from mid so that they could have um, MSU could have made an opening for their team to push in. And that looks like it's the set going to um, Crystal Squid Surge tonight. Doesn't look like they're going to be playing all seven, though. So, yeah, I mean, if I, I can understand MSU's position here. You know, you just got lights out by Coastal Squid Surge, who is currently undefeated, right? And seems to be the top dog here uh, in Division 5. Right. I can understand that more low morale can definitely happen, uh, especially when you have a shutout like that. And it's just like it felt like they didn't have like the confidence to be able to like make those aggressive plays to, and just coordinate together. Because I think something that uh, how do I say Coastal Squid Surge did in spades was coordinate their specials and move up together as a team rather than just like one or two members. Like you saw the 50. Uh, what was it not? 96 gal right 96 gal got the kraken right it went in right maybe got like one pick and then like wasn't ha didn't have a team to follow off of that pick if that if you know what i mean yeah yeah i think that's definitely something we saw a little bit of um msu not following up on each other enough but that's it for tonight am i correct in saying that's it for tonight <laughs> Um, it seems like we might have one more match coming up here, uh, at 9 p.m. here, so, folks, uh, please stay at eight, uh, 8, we're gonna have more CCA matches coming up soon, but in the meantime, Raphael, where can the fine, fine people of Twitch find you? If they want to find me anywhere, they can find my Twitter, it's on screen right there, at L Raphael. that's at L-A-R-A-P-H-Y, um, P-H-A-Y, I can spell, no, I can't. Where can they find you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can see me at my desk right here, just speaking into a microphone. But uh, you know what? If you want to find me online, right, you can just see e e e right up there, NEP2NE with an underscore at the end, both on Twitch as well as Twitter. I don't post too often, but hey, you know what? If you like the sound of my voice and my enthusiasm, I'd greatly appreciate it if you follow me over there. Hold up, I'm just downloading the coordinates of your desk right here, right now. Um, oh, dang, okay, right. dang. You got, you got my latitude and longitude, man. <laughs> this is scary, yeah. okay. Uh, you know what, he might even know my IP address. I, I know my own IP address. I don't know if you do, but uh, you know what, that's yeah, cool, bro. That's cool. That's cool, bro. Okay. You know what? I think uh, we're going to be hopping off for tonight, at least the commentators. But uh, you know what? Stay tuned for the next game that's coming up soon at 9 p.m. EST. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.